Okay, so again, thank you for coming. This is the Getting Started with Blackboard Ultra workshop hosted by uh, the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning. Uh, my name is Kevin Harris. I'm the Instructional Support Coordinator here at CIDL. Um, my role is to uh, support faculty with the use of technology, um, specifically educational technology or instructional technology. And given that uh, Blackboard is so prominent in, in most of our courses. Uh, that primarily has been my focus for the past year here uh, at NIU. Um, I have my contact information on here. And if you have any questions about this workshop or uh, if you need any support related to Blackboard or other ed tech tools, uh, you can reach out. And it's kevin.harris at niu.edu. Um, today, uh, our objectives for this workshop, um, by the end, you should be able to request uh, either your courses in uh, Blackboard or uh, a shell that you could work in. Um, you should be able to set up your gradebook. You should be able to add content to your course. Uh, that's, there's a variety of content types that we're going to go over and uh, know where to find support when needed. And the agenda, we'll look through um, a few resources that are available to you. And again, we'll go through how to request your courses, the gradebook, adding and copying content. We'll look at some other features in Blackboard as well. Um, we'll look at video conferencing in Blackboard. And then um, I'll provide some links for support uh, that you can use um, following this workshop. Um, so some resources, and I have them, I'm just going to pull them over as well. Um, that that CIDL has uh, made available um, include uh, we have a teaching and learning with Blackboard uh, page um, that has everything that you could possibly want, I believe, uh, related to Blackboard or that you might need. Um, if you go here under Ultra, there's a tab that has a, a tremendous amount of information related to Ultra. Uh, every course that's taught at NIU this year using Blackboard will use Blackboard Ultra. So that's kind of our new standard. Um, there are at least some things in here that might be useful. There's a what's new in Ultra tab. Um, Blackboard releases updates to Ultra every month. Usually the first Thursday of every month they go live. Uh, we release a video to highlight some of those um, as well as kind of a text-based um, link here on our site where you can look and see what's coming um, or what may be coming up in the future, especially if there's a feature that you're uh, hoping they have or are hoping is coming soon, you can check uh, here first. We also have um, this best practices page, which is what I'm on here, uh, which is a great start to, uh, or a great place to get started uh, when kind of building out and developing your course. We also have uh, just a, a general website that has a tremendous amount of resources related to teaching and learning um, that you can access. And then Blackboard has a help page um, at help.blackboard.com uh, where you can go and find um, a, a, you know, access their collection of kind of support material uh, that they've made available. And those links are here. And again, I will share this um, PowerPoint with you as well, uh, which will give you access to those links uh, after the workshop. So how to request a course or shell. So every semester, um, instructors will ha have to request their courses in Blackboard. They will not automatically be sent to your Blackboard page. Um, you'll have to go there and um, request your courses. It's a very similar process to request a shell. Um, sometimes people use those terms interchangeably, uh, and they're similar, but they're not the same. So the course is your actual course. Students will be enrolled in the course. You will teach through the course. Uh, you can uh, create your assignments there, use the gradebook, assess learning, um, and so on. A shell is more of like a sandbox, or it's a place where you can build out your course, you can test features, um, but it will never be open to students. Uh, periodically, someone will attempt to open it, uh, but it, they close it. If you, if you open it and add students, they get removed, and the course will get, or the shell will be closed um, every day when Blackboard runs its update. So uh, the shell is a great place to build out your course, or even to build like a master course. And then you can deploy that or copy that into uh, your main course every semester. And I'll show you how to add both of those. Uh, let me, there we go. Oh, 
grab this and pull it over here. So much of this workshop will be um, a demonstration. So I'll walk you through everything that we're going to look at. If you have questions, feel free to unmute and jump in. Um, you can throw them in the chat and I'll try to keep an eye on that as well. So uh, when you go to Blackboard, uh, when you land on the Blackboard page, um, this is what it looks like. You'll, it'll, it'll automatically start you on the institution page. Um, your courses, if you've had, if you've already requested them, will be here under courses. Um, but if you need to request a course or a shell, you will click down here where it says tools. From here, you will find Blackboard faculty tools, which will have this little spaceship on it. And you will then land on a page where it says uh, my courses or my shells. We'll give that a second to load. Here we go. So the Blackboard faculty tools, you have my courses and my shells. Uh, to request your courses, you'll click my courses, you'll select the appropriate semester, and then you'll click search. I don't teach any courses, uh, so mine will be blank. But if you are listed as the instructor of record for a course, those courses will be here. And you'll just, there'll be a little box like this one here, a checkbox that you'll click. Um, and then you can click uh, request single sections. If you teach multiple sections of the same course and you would like to teach those out of one Blackboard page, you would just click those courses and then click combine sections. Then it'll take, then it'll prompt you to ask uh, which course will be the primary. You'll select that. And then that's the course where you'll upload all of the information um, and, and work out of that course. But again, since I don't teach any courses, I can't actually walk through that process. Uh, and then um, you can request these courses 100 days prior to the start of the semester. So you can request courses now for the fall semester, but you will not be able to request your courses for um, the spring semester. Back in tools here, um, and this is what I'm going to do because uh, it's helpful to, to um, teach this workshop in. Uh, I'm going to go to my shells, and I'm going to request a shell for this course. Um, Again, if you're new to Blackboard, a shell is a great place to get started. If you mess something up, it's no big deal. It's really easy to um, kind of delete or erase everything or just make a new shell and start over. Um, to do that, you'll click the plus sign and request new shell. This part really doesn't matter. It's kind of for your own organization. And then I'm going to just call this, and it won't let me call it that much. Um, I'm just going to call it BB1. Blackboard one and hit submit. All everybody with an instructor's account should be able to do this. If you have a staff account, you may or may not have this option. And if you don't, you can send me an email and I can create a shell for you uh, and then add you as the instructor on that. Uh, once you request a shell or your courses, then you'll go back to um, your Blackboard page here and then you can click on courses. It's helpful to refresh the browser. And those should be um, pretty instant. And then you can scroll down and find um, your courses. Blackboard has recently changed its um, filtering options. So this is what it will look like now. Uh, you can uh, filter for current courses or, or courses from a previous semester. Uh, you can have it set up for all courses. It's really up to you. And it will remember your choices uh, for the next time you log in. And here's my course. And so now I have um, a course that I can use started in. Was there a hand up? I'm sorry if I missed that. Hi, sorry, that's, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, it's me. It's, I'm trying to see if I can share my video. I'm not sure if that's working, but um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I was just curious because I'm not actually teaching an official NIU course, but I was wondering if there's a way um, I oversee the capstone process in the honors program, if I could kind of just, it's not really a course, but kind of create a group for our students doing a capstone and just like share content and do things like that. Is that possible or do I have to actually be teaching an official course? No, you can, you can create one. Uh, it will be an organization instead of a course. Um, but that's something we can help get set up. Uh, and that's something, if you hang on at the end of this call, I can help you set one of those up. OK, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And everything will work the same as well for an organization. The language sometimes is different. So instead of students, it says participants and uh, a few little things like that. But all the features are essentially exactly the same. So um, let's see here. So once you get into your course, there are a few things that you can do. Um, 
Blackboard Ultra compared to the original Blackboard uh, is meant to be more student friendly. It's, it's meant to create kind of a more sleek and modern kind of updated view uh, compared to the old system. Uh, it in some ways uh, has limited ability to kind of customize your page. Um, and part of that is to kind of keep a consistent experience for students um, as they move through uh, from course to course. So um, they, when they land on a course, they're gonna have this toolbar here, for example, um, is going to look the same in every course that they log in. Uh, you can't change any of the names of these or you can't remove any of these options uh, from your course. And then when they land on a page or go into a course, they'll land on this content page. Uh, one thing that you can do uh, to customize your course is you can add a course banner and you would do that here under the uh, this course uh, course image tab under edit Dis um, edit display settings. If you click this, um, you can add a banner. Um, you can add your own banner or you can use a stock image from um, Upsplash or Unsplash, uh, which we have kind of thousands of licensed images that we can use. And you can add a custom banner to your course, which will put it at the top of your course here. Uh, and we'll also um, put it on the courses page. You'll, they'll have a little icon um, if they're in the grid view. They'll have an icon of, of your course banner on that page as well. So um, that's one way that you can customize the course and make it kind of stand out or maybe a little easier to find um, when students are searching for your course. So the first thing, um, once you get your course set, uh, is you'll land on this page here. Um, the first place that uh, I would recommend that you start is with the gradebook. Um, most people that are using um, or teaching through Blackboard are using the gradebook uh, feature. And so getting that set up as early as possible will benefit you um, kind of greatly as, as we move down the line. The longer you wait uh, and when you start adding items, uh, the more challenges that you might have um, kind of getting the grades reset um, or uh, Again, it's just it, setting it up early will help avoid confusion kind of down the line. Uh, and to do so, we're gonna just go into gradebook here. And when the first time that you do this, it's going to give you this um, uh, kind of landing page here. There are three views in the gradebook. There's gradable items. So once we put uh, assignments or tasks in our Blackboard page, this will just be a list view of all of the items. So it might say like test one, assignment one, test two, and so on. Um, this grades tab is going to look like a kind of traditional grid view gradebook. And then there's also a students tab, which will be a list of all the students in the course. I don't have any students, um, so there's no list of students here. But uh, what we want to do, though, is find this little wheel out here on the right, this cog. Um, anywhere that you have the ability to edit settings, it's going to look like this. Uh, and on most pages, you'll have um, some option of, of this. So we're going to click on the settings wheel here. Uh, and there are two things that you'll want to set up here, uh, and perhaps more, but at least two. One is the grade schema, and this is how the grade is going to be calculated. Um, to the best of my understanding, NIU doesn't have a, a standard that is applied to every course or discipline. Um, this may be based more on your discipline. So you may want to adjust, um, again, based on, on the way that your department uh, does uh, or handles grades. So all of this is editable. Um, you can Anywhere you hover and there's there may be a purple line over a regular line and a plus sign, we can add another row there, for example, or delete it out. Or we can click the three dots and edit. And let's say we want to make this, you know, a 90 to 100, for example. We could do that as well. And it will adjust the other other grades as you go down. So um, setting up the schema is fairly uh, fairly important that, that you get that done early. Uh, and you can also add uh, a different schema if you prefer. So if you have a, um, a a course that's based on completion, then you would you would change the schema and you could add a different schema for that, um, and so on. So once you get the schema set, you'll save, um, and then you want to. Um, I'm just going to keep this as is um, for this course, uh, but then you're going to want to scroll down over here um, and go to set up overall grade, and this is where you're going to determine. Uh, if your course is going to be based on total points or weighted categories. Um, it also has the ability to do some advanced um, calculations as well. We're not going to focus on that for this workshop. Uh, we have other gradebook workshops, um, or you could set up an appointment with a, with a member of the staff here uh, to help if you're interested in kind of more advanced um, kind of calculations in your gradebook. We'll just use total points, though, for this course. The... Um, 
there are still categories and it even if you're using total points it can be useful um, to set categories especially if you um, like drop grades so some people will have 20 or 10 quizzes and they'll drop the lowest two um, even if you're doing total points if you have those assigned to a category it's really easy to um, kind of build in that feature so there are eight preset categories uh, this is significant because when you when you go to create assignments, there are essentially two main assignment types. There are assignments and tests, but then we can recategorize them using these categories uh, later on. If you use weighted grades, um, you can go in and set those. The thing we would suggest is that let's say you want assignments to be 30% of your grade. It's going to, once you change the, the numbers here, it's going to automatically adjust everything else. So once you have a number set, you want to click this little lock key here. Uh, and it will lock it down. So you wanted to say you're going to put assignments at 30 and you'll put the exam at 50. If you don't lock it down, it's going to every time you change another column, it will change your numbers and you'll find yourself being quite frustrated. Um, so. And then we'll put this at. 20 and then we'll push this lock key here um, and then now my categories uh, and the weight are set. You can also um, within the weighted if you use weighted categories. You can um, set those to be uh, proportional or equal. Um, you kind of have that option in there as well. I'm going to go back to my points though, because that's what I'm going to use here. Um, there are two things over here on the right. One is uh, to calculate grades based on points earned out of total points graded. Um, if you turn that on uh, and there are assignments that you had in your um, in your course that, that weren't graded, uh, those won't count against the student. Um, but if you turn that off, it will count those. Um, it will calculate those as part of the total points. And then if the student doesn't have points, it will negatively impact the grade. And then you can also choose how you want to display the grade to students. You want it to be letters, points, percentages, so on. Um, and then you can even choose to turn off the uh, overall view or the overall grade view for students. So we're going to leave this as is under total points and save. And I'm going to X out of here. Um, a few other useful things that are in this gradebook settings. And again, we're in the gradebook here and on the settings wheel over here to the right. Um, if you want to get uh, kind of updates or um, notifications about student performance, so if students' grades you know, drop below 50% or 60%, uh, you can enter that and you'll get a message when that happens. Um, or if they haven't accessed the Blackboard course in a few days, you can set that as well. Uh, and then this one here is somewhat important. It's the automatic zero. So if a due date passes and you don't turn this off, and I believe it's on by default, default, uh, it will assign automatic zeros um, for students in your course. And uh, it's just important to know that that's, that's on. We'll talk about this a little bit more um, when we talk about uh, copying content in because sometimes when you copy something in, it'll put an old due date on and then it will automatically issue a zero for an assignment, even though you didn't intend for it to, to happen. So if you just know that this is automatically on and if you want to turn it off, you just go into the settings and you just click the checkbox and you can choose to keep the existing zeros or you can clear them uh, if you didn't want them there to begin with. And we're going to just leave it on for this. Lastly, uh, in, in setting up the gradebook, these eight preset categories are stuck. You can't delete them. You don't have to use them, but you can't erase them or change uh, anything related to them. But you can add new categories. Um, so if your department uses, I don't know, simulations, for example, or labs, um, you could add a new category and then you could put, you know, you just type that in as lab or simulation or, or whatever you would like it to be and click create. And then when you when we look at assignments in a minute, um, you can then select that as one of the categories. So that's the main, uh, those are the main components of the gradebook. Uh, the gradebook is the, by far the most common um, request, support with the gradebook uh, is the most common request that we get here at CIDL. Um, we have other workshops that are just specifically related to the gradebook um, that you're welcome to sign up for as well. Um, but are, are there any questions just related to the gradebook uh, from what I've covered or didn't cover that you would like to know about before I move on. Uh, 
I will show you one more thing while I'm here. Um, so I'm gonna, I taught history, high school history for uh, 11 years and my grade book always looked like this grid view. So students would be here and then assignments would be across the top and so on. Um, you can manually add uh, columns to your grade book. And what you'll find with ultra is that these purple plus signs, they're not there. You kind of just have to hover. Um, and so you kind of have to get used to where they're going to be. But essentially anytime there's an item on, a lot of times either before or after, in this case, just after, um, if you hover, it will the line will turn purple and there's a plus sign. You can add a column, you can add attendance, and you can add uh, different calculations, um, kind of depending on your preference. If you create an assignment on the content page, it will automatically create this column for you. You don't have to add one. So some people will create the assignments and then they'll come in and add a manual column. And then uh, there's some confusion because they'll have two columns for the same assignment. Um, but uh, periodically you may do something in class and you wanna add it to your, your grade book on Blackboard, but you don't wanna add it to the content page. Um, to do that, you would just come out here and click this plus sign and then add item. Uh, and then we're just gonna call it item one. We'll set the visibility uh, so that students can see it. We can set the due date. Uh, we'll do it out of points. And again, you can select whatever you'd like for that. Set the uh, maximum points. And then here we can select our um, uh, the category. So let's just call it, um, I don't know, homework. And then save. So that will then appear um, here in this column. And then now I can add either to the left or to the right of that. And then you can move these around pretty easy uh, just by dragging and dropping them once you have multiple items. Um, and now we can see that there's going to be a, a, a list of items here. Um, and I don't have students, so that, that view won't uh, matter yet. But here you can also, if you want to sh shuffle these around, you can grab these little up and down arrows to the right, and just hold them down and move and reorder your grade book uh, in whatever order makes sense uh, to you. So I think that's. Let me make sure I have everything. Ah, one more thing related to the gradebook is accommodations. So um, if a student comes to you uh, that they have an accommodation, it again, it's important that you set that early, especially if it's something like extended time, um, because if you give, a, like a, for example, a timed quiz on Blackboard and you don't include that student's accommodation hasn't been set, and let's say that the quiz was 30 minutes, at 30 minutes, it will submit that student's work and you can't go back and reopen it uh, and then have students continue where they left off. You would then have to uh, create another version of the quiz and then open it and give them more time to work on it. Or um, that, that's usually what has to happen. And it, and it just creates a extra work and, and takes a significant amount of your time. So um, I'm going to just click student preview here really fast because it's going to create a preview user for me. Anytime you want to view anything in the course, um, that's the way to do it. Uh, up here on the right-hand side, you can click student preview and then start preview. This is gonna create a preview user. So it'll say your name, preview user. And then you can test anything and see what students would see uh, and so on here. And then when you exit, if you discard, it will delete everything that your student preview user has done. But if you click save, it will keep them there. So now, for example, if I go back to the gradebook and click students, I have one user in my course and I can look here and I can see that they don't have an assignment or a grade here and so on. So, um, but I did that to show you that if you go into the roster here and you click view everyone in your course, then you have, you can have two options on the view. You can do a grid view or a list view. But if you go out to the three dots to the right of the student, you can click accommodations. And, and if they have a time limit accommodation, I can set the extra time at, let's say it's 50% and I hit save and add. Um, you'll now see a, a little purple flag next to the name. And then here it tells you that there's a custom extra time accommodation. And again, setting these up uh, the first couple of days of your course will save you significant headache and time uh, in the future further down the line. And students typically come to you pretty early and let you know that they have uh, an accommodation. So, so that's it related to, specifically related to the grade book. And the next thing you're going to want to do is add content to your uh, course. And so um, was there a question? I'm sorry if I missed that again. I have you at, I have the chat view open. No, the it's fine. Uh, uh, I have a quick question. Uh, yeah. If I give an uh, student an I grade 
and in the next semester if the student completes it so how to give that uh, student the access so that yeah he, so, he can submit again so you'll email us at CITL uh, c-i-t-l at niu.edu and we can set it up to uh, extend access for specific students <clears throat> if they're incomplete so uh, we can open it up for another you know another semester or another couple of weeks whatever arrangement you make you just email us and we'll we'll contact uh, you and, uh, and can you sure just you give me the email address on your ch in the chat yes i will yeah thank you thanks a lot yep you can just email us there and then um it'll kind of come through on our board and somebody will reach out to you um so the next thing uh with the blackboard course is actually getting content onto the course um the very first time that you add something it's going to look like this and you can click add content uh here with this plus sign then you have a few options uh, if you want to copy something you could copy something from here you can upload um you know documents or or files that you have here as well uh, there's also um, and you can do that from your computer or from the cloud and then you could also go to the content market which would link you to um, some other other providers so for example if you use uh, publisher materials and we have uh, an lti for that let's say you use pearson um, you could go to the content market and add their material from there uh, but for this we're just going to click create and then uh, we have a number of options and they'll appear here in this kind of pop out box uh, the first thing is um, containers so and this is what you'll need to do you'll need to think about how do you want to organize your course before you kind of set out and do it and um, uh, again a, um, a shell is a great place to do this because you can kind of test the different options the main containers are learning modules uh, folders and documents documents kind of fit in multiple places but um, a learning module uh, and a folder are probably the main two if you used Blackboard Original before, you could nest folders as deep as you wanted. You could have a folder, and in that folder, you could have folders, and in those folders, you could have folders, and in those folders, you could have folders, and so on, as deep as you wanted. Uh, in Ultra, you can only go two layers deep. So the top layer can be either a learning module or a folder, and then within that, you can have folders. You can't have learning modules. They're only the top layer, um, And but that's it. That, within those folders, you can't have additional folders. So um, it kind of keeps the content kind of closer to the top and creates less clicks uh, for students to kind of get lost on. So um, if you're transitioning from ultra to uh, from original to ultra, that, that that will be a change. If you're not, then it, you, you won't know the difference. So it won't, <laughs> it won't impact you much. Um, so I'm going to show both of these uh, and discuss why you might use one over the other. The first is the learning module. Um, You'll set it up. We'll just call it module one. You could name this, you know, week one or unit one or whatever, however you structure your course. I taught history, so all my examples here are history based. Um, I want to make this visible. You can type a description in for your module. Um, and one nice, well, I guess two nice features related to the module is you can force sequence. So uh, if you teach a course that you want students to do one thing before they do the next, before they do the next, and so on. You can force that sequence with a module. You cannot do that with a folder. Um, and you can add an image. And again, you can use uh, images from your computer, or you can do stock images from uh, this Unsplash. And I'm just going to go here. Uh, and so then you can structure modules like this. So if there was a description in there, it would appear here. And then you can add the image, which again, gives it a, a nice little kind of visual separation. Um, now that we've added one item to our course, that big plus sign is gone. And, <laughs> and now we have to search. So there's always this plus sign here at the top where you can add items. Um, or there's always one below, but it's just a gray line. You have to hover over it to get the purple plus. And you can add items here. And if you want to add something within the module, you can create it anywhere you want and drag and drop it in. Or uh, if we just open this up, there's a plus sign within it. And they, these carrots, these kind of up and down carrots open and close the modules or folders. So here we'll just uh, create. 
And then here we'll add a folder uh, and we'll just, I don't know, we'll call this readings. We'll make it visible. You can add a description, but you cannot add um, a, an image and you cannot change the colors of the folders or the fonts uh, or any of that. So, and then if I want, I can just close these up and that's it. So I can add within module one, I can add really as many folders as I want, but within this readings folders, I cannot add, if I go to click this plus sign, for example, I can't add um, any more folders because that's, that's the kind of two layers of nesting, but I can add other document types or other uh, links or folder or other content in here, but it just can't be another layer of folders because um, it only lets you nest too deep. So those are folders and modules, and they are essentially the main organizational tool of your course. Uh, it's really kind of be based on your own preference uh, and what you prefer and kind of how you want students to navigate the course. I personally prefer the module. I think um, th that the module one gives that kind of visual distinction between um, each of your kind of content pieces um, and that ability to force sequence can be, uh, I think, helpful. But again, that depends on you and uh, uh, and how you like to approach the course. Uh, one tip that we would give you um, is to, so you can have these visible or um, or not. So that right now this is visible to students. I could also set this release conditions. So let's say module one was, uh, you know, the first week of September. I could release this the first week of September, but it'd be hidden before then. And then the second week of September, module two would release and so on. If you're going to do, do it like that, we typically uh, would advocate for doing them in reverse order. So module, the, essentially the newest information would be at the top. You can set that up at the beginning or you can kind of move them um, as you're building the course or as the time comes. Again, that's just, that's optional, it's up to you, but um, it's good practice to, to have the newest material near the top. So students kind of see it first when they, when they land on the page. Um, also, no, that's it. That's all we're going to say about modules and folders. Any questions related to modules and folders or organization in general? I'm going to very, very briefly uh, show you the um, the documents because uh, the first week of August, documents are going to change. So a document is another great way to add content to your course. Um, you do so by, you can upload files into this as well. You can add things from the cloud storage, or you could just add content and it's going to give you this text editor box here. You can add videos, you could add links, um, <coughs> tables, uh, text, anything that you want, um, you can add here and you can build out um, documents. Right now, it's a fairly limited, uh, has fairly limited abilities. Um, the one really nice thing about it is that it has Ally embedded. So when we're talking about student accessibility, you can see if your content is accessible to students. Um, and essentially what that means is that students can use a uh, screen reader to access that content, or they can um, use Ally to download, uh, a, I think it's eight different uh, file types um, of, of more accessible content. For example, you just added a PDF, it's there, they, they have the kind of at least, um, uh, the least a, a kind of accessible friendly formatting. So um, using a document may help. As of um, the beginning of August, this is going to change. Right now, it's just one big um, kind of like a one long word document. In August, there's, you're going to essentially have kind of four columns and you can add different columns and rows and kind of build out um, in a much more kind of creative layout. Uh, you'll also have the ability to convert file types into. So you could import a, a PDF or import a PowerPoint and it will um, reformat it to fit in these documents and then you can move the parts around. Um, it's getting ready to be, I think, a much stronger tool. And then not next month, but uh, either in September or October, I believe they're going to embed um, kind of questions. So you could have like a, a knowledge check question built into the documents and so on. If you're interested in the new documents uh, next month, and I, I want to say it's the 15th, but I'm not positive on that. Um, we're going to have a workshop related just to the enhanced ultra documents. Uh, and so if that's something you're interested in, I would encourage you to check it out. So those are, again, the main, that's the main uh, organizational options. Um, then we could go into the uh, assessment types. So 
if we click the plus and we click create, you have really two main assessment types. They've added forms as well. Um, forms are a great way to um, get feedback from students, maybe check for understanding. They cannot be graded. So it's important to note that if you put a form in, uh, there's no ability to grade the form. So if you're hoping to score it, don't use forms. Um, you can use tests or assignments. If you're coming from Blackboard Original, you when you went to add an item, there was a giant list of different choices. Um, here we have fewer, but we just will then recategorize them uh, once you create them. So tests and assignments. We also have discussions and journals, which I'm not really going to cover. Um, but as of today, tests, if you click test or assignment, it's almost exactly the same. Uh, there's very little difference. So you're going to land here. We can call this test one. You'll click the plus sign here to add content to the test. So you can add question pools. You can add uh, a wide range of question types. <coughs> you can copy in questions from other tests, um, reuse questions, for example. Um, you can add text. You can add files, um, breaks, and so on. All right here. Um, the, right now, assignments look exactly the same. But again, next month, assignments are going to change. So um, I'll talk about that in a minute. But let's just add uh, a true or false question and show you what they look like. Uh, we're just going to, uh, I'm not going to actually, so here's where you would type your question. You can, you can add, um, you know, an image or link something in here, hyperlink it uh, as part of your question if you choose. Um, and then you have the ability to select what is the correct answer, true or false. And then if you want to set automatic feedback for correct or incorrect answers, you just click this slider here. Um, You'll, you want to set the point value here because this is going to determine your overall point value of your um, assignment. So let's just say this one's going to be out of 10. Uh, we have the question um, as we want it, and we'll hit save. Uh, and now we have our uh, one question, and we can see over here on the right-hand column that it says 10 maximum points. Once I go into the settings, I can't change it here. I have to change the point value of each question. They default currently to one point each. So I'm, I'm going to add one more question here. Uh, I'll, let's say I'll add a multiple choice. Uh, and we'll just we'll do that. And then we'll give the options A, B, and C. And then we're going to select one here and hit Save. And that one was out of one point. So now we can see that my total points are out of 11. And if I want to make one extra credit, I can go in, click the three dots, click Edit, and then I can make that an extra credit extra credit question. Uh, another thing you can do there, cancel here. Um, if you want to move the questions up and down, if you hover um, just below the points there, you'll see these up and down arrows. You can kind of drag and drop your question. I guess freezing on me here. I didn't like that. So uh, let's try again. <laughs> So I, I think it moved it. So here we go. If I want to drag and drop it, I can just drag it, hover until I see something purple, uh, like this little purple thing appeared in the background. There we go. Well, maybe not. There we go. Uh, so you just kind of have to mess with it until you get it to the spot where it actually likes that it is. Um, and you can move the questions up and down that way. Uh, once you have your question set, you can go over here to the settings, click the little wheel again, and then now we can set the due date and time. If you don't want a due date, you can turn that on. You can block late submissions. You can prohibit new attempts after the due date. You can allow or disallow uh, students the ability to, to discuss uh, down here in this little text box. You can set how you want the questions to display. Do you want them to be random? Um, you can randomize the, the questions. You can randomize the answers. You can you can mark it as a formative assessment. Um, that doesn't exclude it from being graded uh, in in Blackboard, but it will put that formative marking on it. And then here's where you can change the um, the category. So if you want this to be a quiz instead of a test, you would just set quiz. You can set the attempts. It can be unlimited. It could be one through ten. Uh, you can set the point 
if you want how you want it to be displayed points letters percentages and that's going to be based on that schema that you set at the beginning um, so useful to set that up early and then here you want it to you want it to post automatically if not you'll have to go in and click post for each individual test or you can click post all once you've had them graded um, and then you can kind of determine what students can see after they submit so there's a uh, they can view their submission. Maybe you don't want them to see their submission because you're worried they're going to share that with someone else. You can turn that off or change it to, you know, after the due date or after a specific date. And the same with automatic feedback and scores and correct answers. You have full control over what they can and when they can see anything. And then um, there's some other features in here. If you want to use lockdown browser or set a time limit, uh, or if you want to assign this to uh, groups and so on. So then you hit save, and then now you have a test. Once students submit that test, you go to submissions, and this is where all of their work will appear, and you'll see their scores here. And if you didn't hit um, the uh, automatically post grades, then you'll have to click here to post their assignments once you have them graded. If you want to give students a specific exemption, so let's say the student doesn't have a, an accommodation, but they had a conflict the day that you gave this quiz and they'd communicated with you and you want to exempt them uh, or, or provide some sort of exception to the due date, you can set that out here at these three dots from the submission view. Um, so that's the test. For assignments, uh, right now, as of today, if you make assignments, it's going to look exactly like the test. The only difference is the little icon is, is different. Uh, you click the plus sign, you get everything the same. But starting um, the first Thursday in August, which I believe is August 1st, um, the uh, assignments will no longer have all of those question types. Um, the only thing you'll have is um, this text editor box. And so then you can add um, your, you can put in attachments, you can type out directions and so on. Students can then upload their assignments. But assignments will no longer have the ability to add um, you know, essay questions or multiple choice questions or so on. It'll be more of like a submission tool for um, you know, an assignment. If you want it to have like multiple choice, true, false, essay questions, you'll use the test feature. Um, there's some reasons for that. Currently, if you make an assignment, uh, I'm just going to make one here, for example. Um, and I'm going to hit save. I'm going to make it visible to students. Um, and I close this for now. Uh, if I go into this assignment, I can, let's say I added a document, like a PDF here that had directions in it. Um, if a student has viewed the document, so if they want to, let's go to preview. Uh, if they want to look at the directions for this assignment, they had to click here. Now they have to click start attempt. So now this shows that an attempt has been started and now you really, uh, it's really limited your options to edit this assignment. So let's say you made this, but you weren't quite ready with it, but you accidentally made it visible and a student started this and you wanna now update the documents that are that you included. Um, you, it, there's a process that you have to go through to essentially each student that's opened it, you have to go in and remove their submission uh, and so on. In the future, they'll be able to look at all of the assignments I mean, I'm sorry, look at all the directions, including the attachments, uh, without it starting a submission for them, um, which is going to give you more options to edit. And it also is going to just kind of create a difference between the test tool and the assignment tool. So um, those are the main uh, assignments, uh, or the main, I'm sorry, the main assessment tools, the assignments and the, um, I need to exit this, uh, the assignments and the test tool. You just recategorize them to any category that you want if you want it to be a quiz instead of a test or if you want it to be um, an essay instead of assignment or whatever you want it to be there are a few other assessments uh or that that people use uh the discussion board um, is here you just click that um, and then you can put in the question save by default they're not graded if you want them to be graded you have to go into the settings and um click grade discussion, for example, and then you can set um, the settings for that kind of however you see fit. I'm going to close this. And then um, 
the last kind of main uh, assessment tool or, or type that people would use would come from the content market. And so anything uh, outside of Blackboard uh, that you might use in your course is likely going to be found here. So for example, if you want to upload videos to your course, we uh, are going to highly recommend that you use Kaltura to store your videos, and then you can link them in um, here using these LTIs. The same if you use something like VoiceThread um, or Yellowdig or some of these other tools that we have, or any publisher uh, material, you can link those in um, here using, using this. And those will link in. Uh, some of them will even create a gradebook column for you. Some of them don't. Uh, it's worth kind of testing them out and seeing um, beforehand. If not, you can go in and create the manual uh, column in the gradebook. And again, to do that, you would go to plus and you click on content market. And then here are all those extra tools uh, that you might use. So those are the assignment or assessment types. Any questions on those? Okay, um, and again, I know I'm moving fairly fast for this, um, but we, we have workshops on each of these areas um, that are gonna go into much more depth on, um, you know, on the gradebook or, or on um, you know, the different assessment types and so on. So, um, and like I said, we have that one coming up on just on Ultra Documents and the new Ultra Documents. Um, the last thing that you may want to do is copy content. So if you create a course in a shell, uh, or if you taught a course in Ultra, you're teaching one this semester and you want to use it again next semester, um, it's really easy to copy everything in there at one time over. If you, if you just want specific items or if you're coming from original, you have a whole course built out in original or some material in original, um, you can do a more granular copy by one item or a couple of items at a time, copy them over and check them out. There are two ways to do this. Um, the first is on these three dots up here in the uh, next to this magnifying glass. You click that and you can click copy items or you can um, just click find a purple plus sign and then click copy content. From here, you would find the course that you want. If you're copying the whole course, um, and again, if you're coming from uh, original to ultra, we do not recommend that you would copy everything at once. We would recommend a much more granular copy where you can go through and check um, check things. Um, but if you're copying, from a shell straight into your course, you can just click uh, the whole checkbox, click start copy, and then it will copy over the material. If you don't want the whole course and you want the more granular copy, you just click the little arrow in, um, and then you find, let's say I wanna go into the content, and let's just say I wanna add um, this test and this assignment. They'll show up here, and then I just click start copy, this little wheel will spin. If it's just a few items, it doesn't take very long. Um, that one loaded pretty fast. Sometimes it seems to take forever. Uh, if, if it's gone like you know 30 seconds and nothing is there and it's only a few items that aren't huge, um, you can just go up and refresh the browser and it will usually appear. These came in nice because they came in hidden. Um, but if they, uh, what you can see here is that the due dates came in from the past, right? So it says 613 and 67. So it's important if you're copying something in to check the due dates, especially if you have those automatic zero set because now if I go into the gradebook um, and then I go into um, grades here, if I had automatic zero set and those visible, that student, my previous user student would now have several zeros and then their grade, their grade would reflect that. And uh, I assure you that students will be emailing you um, very shortly after you do that. And then you'll have to go in and make those changes. So it's helpful to just kind of keep your eye on it ahead of time. Um, and you can just go into it and change uh, the due date and the settings um, as needed. But that's how you copy content in. Again, that is, you just click the plus sign, copy content, find the course that you want, click the arrow, go into the content this way. Uh, if you had modules, you'd have to click on the module and go into the module and then find the content and so on. But um, if you build out in a shell or if you're gonna teach this semester, you build your course out and the next semester, you're gonna teach the same course again, just copy the whole course in, adjust your due dates as needed and um, and then you'll be ready to go. Uh, and that's it for course copy. 
The final thing that I'm going to share is uh, how you can contact us. There we go. So we did how to request a, a course or your shell. We covered the gradebook. We covered adding content. Um, oh, let me do this one really fast. We have a five minutes. So um, we did most of these. The last one is the video conferencing tool. So that's uh, a number of you may may want to use video conferencing. You essentially have, well, there are three main options. You may have more than that. But uh, the three main options to use video conferencing through Blackboard are Collaborate, which is what we're using right now. Um, it's built in. You'll see it over here on the left-hand side. Um, and they're fairly easy to set up Collaborate sessions <coughs> on here as well. If you use Zoom, um, that's fine. But you'll have to like create. Um, uh, some sort of content like a file, uh, I'm sorry, a document or something that'll have your Zoom information in on it and students would open that and they can get the link to your Zoom course and so on. If you use Teams, you can now link Teams uh, into your Blackboard page as well uh, and then students can just access that Teams link over here in this left toolbar. And we talked about copying content. And lastly, um, you're not expected to be an expert on Blackboard. Um, this we have a whole staff here at CIDL that um, you know works on a, you know teaching and pedagogy or uh, educational technology or now AI is becoming a new a new topic that you may want to discuss. Um, <clears throat> if you need any support at any time, just reach out to us. Uh, the easiest way is to uh, email us at uh, CITL, C -I -T -L, at niu.edu, which I dropped into the chat. Um, there are also places on our website where you can go. You can schedule a one on one consultation with us. Um, there's the link there as well. I'm, like I said, I'll, I'll attach this website, or I'm sorry, this PowerPoint to the uh, email that I send. Um, we host workshops every month, um, a, a pretty wide range of them. It's been a little bit slower in the summer, but moving into August, once the um, once instructors come back to campus, the number of those workshops will start to increase. <clears throat> and typically, especially the Blackboard ones, are kind of sequenced in a way that the most relevant content for that time in the semester um, is going to be presented. So for example, calculating final grades and gradebook stuff, we'll have one of those in December, I know, um, right before the end of the semester. Um, and right at the beginning of the semester, we'll have stuff about setting up your course or setting up your gradebook or um, like I said, the new new features or new ultra docs and so on. CIDL has a template. So if you don't want to start from scratch, um, you can go to this link and request the template. And then essentially how that works is you'll get copy only access. And I just showed you how to copy content. You can just copy the template in, which will give you a whole bunch of resources um, that you don't have to go and find uh, for, for different campus resources that are useful to students. And then there's also a module structure that you can use. And then you just make copies of that module for every module that you would need. Uh, and it, it's a great way to kind of get your course up and running and have some content on your page without having to build everything out from scratch. Uh, and then as I pointed out at the beginning, our website, uh, niu.edu slash CIDL has a, is a tremendous resource full of information related to teaching and learning. Uh, and then specifically, you can go to the Blackboard teaching and learning page uh, and find really anything you need about Blackboard. Uh, and I believe that is it. So thank you for attending. If you have questions, um, feel free to ask. And if you want to hang out and ask the questions, you can do that as well. Um, you can always email me, kevin.harris at niu.edu. Uh, I'm going to send you a follow-up email, so you'll have my email address there as well um, this afternoon. And um, again, feel free to reach out to us. Anything that you need, we're here to help you. Um, so yeah, feel free to use us. Don't don't feel like you're putting us out. Or I know some people are like, oh, I'm sorry, this feels like a you know, silly question. There are none. Uh, we're happy to take any questions that you have. So thank you again for your time. And sorry for the uh, issue with the link at the start. And I'm going to stop 